hello and welcome welcome back uh, old friends are new because it's my last study video um, i believe we sort of grew in size my tiny youtube channel now we have a thousand more subscribers which is great because i love it that so many of us are so you know passionate about studying studying the word studying the torah and today i have a an extremely mind blowing video and it's a study on lamentations 5 now you know tisha biav is just around the corner right that's the 9th of av and i believe it's uh, let me move this hang on yeah i believe it's 26th of july to 27th of july now every time tisha biav comes around i read the book of lamentations but around 2 years ago the lord took me through a an amazing study through the book of lamentations and i came across a code an amazing code that's hidden by jeremiah the prophet in the book of lamentations now i'll tell you what happened okay uh, now you know in the past few months i have not been posting any study videos well partly it's because i really you know after the last study video i got a lot of comments saying that women are not not allowed to teach so just a disclaimer okay i am not teaching i am a fellow student of the torah and when i come across something amazing in studying the torah i share it so it's not like i'm i'm a school teacher or something it's just that i'm a fellow student who loves to study the word and when i come across some amazing you know significant findings in the word that i feel you know the lord has shown me sorry that's danny my dog <laughs> then i have to share it with my fellow students just think of me as one of those studio studios you know bookwormish students who's always studying and and sharing the notes okay so don't think of me as a teacher all right and as always take everything to the lord i mean i'm just uh, sharing what i learn and what he shows me in the word right so what happened um in uh, tisha biav A lot of things happened. Okay, I'm going to try and make this smaller. Hang on. Okay, so um, Tisha B'Av is the ninth of Av. It's a, a terrible day for the people of God, for the Israelites, because first of all, um, you know, when they were, when the, when Moses sent the spies, he sent twelve spies into Canaan to sort of suss out the land, and the spies out of the 12 of them that went okay two of them only two of them came back uh, and that was Joshua and Caleb only two of them came back with a good report and because of that the entire community you know started wailing and crying that oh there are giants in the land they're going to kill us they're going to eat our children etc etc and God punished them and instead of you know and they had to be in the wilderness for 40 years and that generation never entered the land except for Joshua and Caleb all right because those were the only two who came back with a good report the first temple built by Solomon okay was destroyed by Nebuchadnezzar the Babylonian uh, king in uh, 586 BC all right so it's all over here you can just go to the you know wikipedia page i'll link these pages below in case you have difficulty finding them that happened on the 9th of av The second temple, which was built by Ezra and Nehemiah, uh, also known as Herod's Temple in the New Testament, the temple in which Jesus Yeshua walked, and he overturned the tables, you know, for the money lenders and the people selling, you know, buying and selling in that courtyard. So that temple was, as uh, Yeshua, as Jesus predicted, was destroyed in 70 A.D. by the Romans. All right. Now. Uh, all that happened but there were so many other calamities that also happened okay let me just see if i can bring this down a bit yeah so you go through this wikipedia page of what all happened okay uh, the jews were you know the first crusade started and it, they killed a lot of jews in france and rhineland jews were expelled from england again that was on the 9th of august this is all that i'm saying happened on tisha biav okay expelled from france from spain so many things happened okay uh germany entered the world war uh, entered uh, world war 1 okay which eventually led um to world war 2 you know when world war 1 germany was defeated and they were sort of really um uh what can we say they were kind of crushed 
and to come back into power, they started World War II. Okay, and that led to the Holocaust. And you know, six million people, Jewish people, died in the Holocaust. So all I'm saying is that Tisha B'Av, Tisha B'Av, the ninth of Av, has been a horrible time. All right, for the Jewish people, for the people of God, for the Israelites. Now, Jeremiah, who was also known as the weeping prophet, right? This is Jeremiah over here. I think I have a bigger picture of him somewhere. Anyway, so he wrote uh, the book of Lamentations around this time, the first around the time the first temple was destroyed, 586 BC by Nebuchadnezzar. And this is an amazing book, Lamentations. Now, most people say, oh, he's crying, weeping, and it's all about sadness and loss, and I don't like reading Lamentations, but I'm telling you, my friends, if you see, if you read the book in Hebrew, you will be mind blown because Jeremiah the prophet was a linguistic engineer. He was this genius, okay? Now, it's made up of five chapters, okay? So, now... You know the Hebrew, the the sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. So the first four chapters, okay, chapters one, two, three, and four are acrostic. What does that mean? Acrostic means that Jeremiah starts every verse, okay, with the with the alphabets, okay. So like the first chapter has 22 verses. Verse one starts with Aleph, okay. So you have Aleph, Bet, Gimel, Dalet, Hey. Vav, Zain, Het, Tet, Yod, Kaf, Lamed, Mem, Nun, Samek, Ain, Pe, Sati, Kof, Resh, Shin, and Tav. These are the 22 Hebrew alphabets. So in the first four chapters, Jeremiah starts each verse with the alphabets in, you know, in sequence. So it's acrostic. So the first verse starts with Aleph, second one with Bet, third one with Gimel, fourth one with Dalet, so on and so forth, okay? Now, in the third chapter, chapters 1, 2, and 4, all right, have 22 verses. Chapter 3 has 66 verses. So, in chapter 3, verse 1, 2, and 3 start with Aleph. Verse 4, 5, and 6 start with Bet, and then Gimel, and then Dalet, and so on and so forth till he gets to Tav, all right? But, the genius that Jeremiah was, you know what he did? In chapter 5, there is no acrostics. If you read chapter 5, okay, so let me go, let me take you to the interlinear Bible, okay? Um, hang on. Yeah, so here we are. This is the interlinear Bible, all right? So chapter 5, you'll find, you'll find the entire book of Lamentations is acrostic. It's beautiful. It's like, it's like um, a feat of linguistic engineering by Jeremiah, okay? But in chapter 5, Jeremiah just breaks the acrostic thing. Now, why would he do that? You would say, oh, he got tired of writing in acrostics, you know. He just sort of let out his heart and feelings. That's what a lot of commentaries say, that he got, he just poured out his heart in chapter 5. I'm here to tell you that the Lord has shown me something amazing. Jeremiah did not, in Lamentations 5, the book of Lamentations, chapter 5, he breaks the acrostics. Why? Why would he do that when he has maintained acrostics? For the first four chapters, why would he break it in five? Because there's a hidden code. And when you study this in Hebrew, you're going to be mind blown. I'm going to show you how I went about it, okay? So here you have Lamentations 5. It has 22 verses corresponding to the alphabets, the 22 alphabets of the Hebrew language, okay? From Aleph to Tav, all right? Now, the first one, okay, I'll keep, leave a link for this in the description so you can go and see it for yourself. Okay, so in this, the word is Zakor, okay, means remember. So remember, Lord God, what has come upon us. Look and behold our reproach, all right? So this is verse one. It starts with what? It starts with Zakor, okay? Do you see this, Zakor? And what is the corresponding uh, strongs is 2142. So what I've done is I've created an excel sheet okay i was led to do this this is amazing it's mind-blowing watch this okay verse one starts with the alphabet sign the first word used in the verse is zakor i just showed you that the hebrew strongs of zakor is 2142 and i just showed you that as well see let's go back there okay zakor 
2142. Now, whatever I'm showing you, I will give you links. Go and study it for yourself also. You're going to be mind blown after this study. Okay, second verse starts with Nahala. Okay, Nahala, um, Nahala Tenu is basically, um, it means our inheritance. Okay, inheritance. Nahala is inheritance. And the corresponding strong Hebrew is 5159. All right. So, so on and so forth, I've gone to each verse, the beginning of each verse in Lamentations 5, okay, written by Jeremiah, the linguistic genius. And what I've done is, I've said it begins with the, you know, the alphabet, it begins with the, because Hebrew is an alphanumeric language, I've even put the alphabet numerical value next to this, okay. So, the chord, the Nahala, right, I showed you that uh, the Hebrew strong is 5159, it means Nahala. All right. So Zakor is to mark, to remember, to be recognized, to make, to be remembered. Now, this is a nuance of uh, Hebrew, okay, when God says to make, to be remembered, okay. And I've also given the occurrence of this word Zakar, okay, in the Torah, the first occurrence, all right, and so on and so forth. Now, if you see there's Zakor, there's Nahala, Yathomim, uh, which is basically um, Hebrew Strong's 3490, that's Yathom, meaning fatherless or orphan, okay? Then you have Memenu, okay? Because verse 4 starts with Mem, Memenu, but the Strong's number they are given is 4325, okay? Verse 4. And when you check um, 4325, you get Maim. Hebrew Strong's 4325 is Maim, okay? And that means waters, flood or filthy water also, very dirty water. And that is given to us in the first occurrences, Genesis 1, 2, okay, where the Spirit of God moved, moved upon the waters, right? So, so on and so forth, I've plotted every single, uh, there are 22 verses, and as you can see, I've gone right up to Kaf, okay, the 22nd verse, and I've, and I've sort of um, used uh, the first word used in this verse in the verse in verse one it was zakhar in verse two is nahala verse three is yathamim verse four is memenu verse five is al now al okay the hebrew strongs is five nine two three okay and this is used multiple times okay verse five verse 17 verse 18 it's used thrice okay it begins with al so what was I led to do? So as I mentioned here, okay, I've, I put a comment here saying the first occurrence was Genesis 1 verse 2, okay? And here we have the first part of that verse, all right? So, goodness, let me make this even smaller. Okay, here we go. So here we have the first part of this uh, verse, okay? which is darkness was over the face of the deep, okay, from Genesis 1-2. Now, when Al is repeated in um, verse 17, let me take this down. What I've done is I've used the second occurrence. And the third time I've used the third occurrence, which is Genesis 1-7, okay, because when one word is used to start three verses, there's a reason Jeremiah did it. And I believe it is based on the occurrence of the word you know the occurrence of the word in the torah the way it occurs the first occurrence second occurrence third occurrence okay the rest of the words are all pretty much um, easy to understand i'll just take you through this quickly okay so here we have the verse four beginning with my menu and when you look up four three two five like for example the core is two two one four two right so when you look it up in strong's You'll say you'll see that it says Zakhar, okay? But God remembered Noah, the first occurrence. So that's what I plotted into the Excel sheet, okay? Uh, Genesis 8 1 remembered Noah. Now, if you go to Memenu, okay, which is the fourth verse, let's go to the fourth verse. I'll show you in um, interlinear. The fourth verse starts with Memenu, okay? What is the strong Hebrew? 4325, right? Now, if I look up Memenu, all right, let's just type in Strong's, Strong's 4325. Let's just look it up. The word is Mayim, 
okay so what i've done is i've not just gone over what memenu means it means the waters but the actual strong uh, hebrew word corresponding to this is mine okay and where is the first occurrence in genesis 1 2 okay so so again we have this very interesting thing that jeremiah has done because he's you know he starts the words like Mizraim, for example, okay, the verse 6 begins with Mizraim, all right? But actually, when you look up Hebrew Strong's, it's Midri, okay? Midri is basically Egypt, Egyptian, of Egyptian origin, or of Egypt. Now, you know Egypt is a euphemism for this world, all right? So, uh, oh my God, there's a bug around, oh dear, okay, never mind. So anyway, Egypt is a euphemism for this world. This corrupt world is often called Egypt, okay? Now, then you have the verse 7, which begins with the left, that's Abutenu. Okay, the verse begins with Abutenu, and it's Strong's number 1. What does that mean? That means Abba or Ab. Okay, that's Father, our Father, the Lord Almighty. Okay, then we have, uh, you know, like this, you can see that um, from verse 4, I've told you, Ain, Al, Misraim, Abutenu, Abadim, okay, which basically means a bond servant. The... Strong's word is Ebed. It says Abadim, but the Strong's word 5650 uh, five, five, is Ebed. Okay, then you have um, verse 9, beginning with Benap Shenu. Okay, but Benap Shenu is basically Nefesh. 5325. Okay, or is it 53? I'm sorry, 5315. The font is so small, I'll try and get my other specs on it. My eyesight, I tell you. I wish God was. Yeah, 5315. Okay, so let's take a look at this. Um, I wanted to show you this, right? 5315. This is verse 9. So let's go to verse 9 uh, in the interlinear. Verse 6, verse 7, verse 8, verse 9. Okay, so Benap Shenu. Okay, this means Benap, Benap Shenu. Okay, at the risk of our lives, Benap Shenu. But when you go to Strong's, okay, let's again check the number. It's 5315. So now if I type in Strong's 5315, Strong's uh, 5315, maybe I should have kept all this open from beforehand. What is it? It is Nefesh, okay, Nefesh, a soul, a living being, life. So I have plotted that in the Excel sheet, okay. All right, so if you go to verse 9, you will see Benap Shenu, but it is Nefesh, breathing creature, soul, a living being, all right. First occurrence, Gen Genesis 1 to, uh, 120, all right, well, chapter 1, verse 20. Okay, then you have Aurenu hmm, on verse 10, which is basically the Hebrew strong is 5785, it's or, which means naked or skin or hide. Now, it's used for the first time in Genesis 321, where coats of skin, you know, God made them coats of skin and clothed them. Okay, then you have, this is very interesting, verse 11 is Nashim. 802. Now, if you look up Strong's 802, you will find okay, that's really strong, powerful for me. Okay, if you look up Strong's 802, you will find it means Isha, which is which is the word for woman, and it also means Nashim, which is the word for two wives. Okay, so you can look that up, but I've created a note here that the first use of Isha is Genesis 222. Okay that God created the woman, you know, from the rib that he took out of Adam. And then, but the first occurrence of Nashim is in Genesis 4.19, where Lamech is talking, you know, to his two wives. Lamech took two wives, that's in Genesis 4.19. So, you see, so this word Nashim, it means two wives, specifically two wives, okay? Woman, bride, wife, specifically, specific, sorry, can't talk, specifically two wives. Then you have Sarim, all right? Verse 12 begins with Sarim, but the uh, Strong's word is Sar, okay? If you look up this 8269, you'll find it, Sar, which means Prince, Captain, Chief, Ruler, okay? Then verse 13 is, it begins with Beth, it, the word is Bahurim, okay? Bahur is actually the Strong's word. It means the chosen young man, okay? So like this, so on and so forth, I've um, got these words and all the way up to verse 22, okay? Well, verse 22 is really funny, okay, because it starts with ka, okay, and the word used is ki, which means that, 
Now that the Strong's number is three five eight eight. Okay, that's Hebrew Strong's three five eight eight. All right, it occurs four thousand four hundred and eighty eight times in three thousand nine hundred and ten verses. So what do we do? We look to the first occurrence in the Torah for this word key. Okay, so now I hope you're getting where I'm coming from. How I've uh, got the message. Okay. And the first verse where key is used is God saw the light and it was that it was good and God divided the light from the darkness. All right. So this is the way um, I did the decoding. All right. Of the first letters, the first, al um, sorry, the first word used in the verses in Lamentations 5. There is a bug here and I'm so shoo shoo COVID. Hmm. It's very annoying. Just when I'm making a video. There's been no bugs the whole day for the last, I don't know how many weeks. And now this guy comes here and he's like, just annoying me. Hello, go away. In Jesus name, I have power over you. Little bug. Wow. Just look at this thing. <laughs> anyway, so, uh, sorry, I got off track there. <laughs> Hang on, let me come back to you. Mm. Okay, I'm back. And I'm, this time round, I'm armed with a swatter. That thing comes near me again. I'll say, I have dominion over you. <laughs> All right. Okay. So let's get back to this. So what happens is that the meanings of the first word of the words based on the Hebrew strong number. So the words are here. Okay. The first word till um, verse 22. They're all here. You know, there's this mind blowing message. Rather, the coded message that Jeremiah left for us to find. All right. So, as I was saying in the last word, which is key, it's used like, you know, 4,488 times in 3,910 verses. So, I said, we're going to look at the first occurrence because wherever wherever there's some confusion, always look at the first occurrence. And like, for, for example, Al, okay, or Al, that is used in... Uh, Three different verses, okay. Three different verses in Jeremiah. It's not Jeremiah. Lamentations chapter five. Sorry, I keep saying Jeremiah. I'm so sorry. Uh, Lamentations chapter five, which was written by Jeremiah. Uh, but see, it occurs in verse 17, verse 18. Okay, so as I mentioned, I've used it. You know, first occurrence, second occurrence, third occurrence in the Torah. That way, all right. So the message that came out of this is one mind-blowing message. And I am going to read that out to you right now. Okay. So let's move this out. This is the message that comes out. Okay. Now I'll try and put this link this on Google Drive so that you can actually download this and you can work on it yourself and see how amazing this is. Okay. I hope I can manage this Google Drive thing. I'm not so technically sound. So anyway, so this is the great message hidden by Jeremiah, the linguistic genius engineer. In Lamentations 5, which is the only chapter of Lamentations that does not, that is not acrostic. It doesn't start with Aleph, Bet, Gimel, Dele, that kind of thing, okay? It's totally hodgepodge. It's all over the place, which is very strange because Jeremiah, as I said, was a genius when it came to writing, all right? So here, the great message hidden by Jeremiah in Lamentations 5 is to remember the inheritance of the orphans, dividing the waters above looking down upon Egypt this world okay so to remember the inheritance of the orphans dividing the waters above looking down upon this world or this Egypt the father Abba with the servant of servants Yeshua Jesus okay why why have I said with the servant of servants because this word here is a bed okay so verse 8 starts with Abadim, all right, which is Strong's number 5650. It means a bed, all right, a bed, and that means bond servant, slave. First occurrence is Genesis 925, which actually actually says a servant of servants, okay. And Jesus says to everybody who follows him that you have to be like me, a servant of servants to serve people, right? Now. So let's go again to remember the inheritance of the orphans dividing the waters above 
looking down upon okay looking down upon because this word okay this is al it means above over upon always with a downward aspect so it's someone up there looking down okay it's like if you're up somewhere up on the first floor you're looking down on the ground floor okay so above looking down upon egypt or this world the father abba with the servant of servants there's no one else but yeshua jesus okay will take the souls all right nefesh who are naked and clothe them dress them right to be his bride his wife nashim specifically two wives why because church and israel specifically two wives okay so the father the father he remembers the inheritance of the orphans dividing the waters looking down upon egypt this world the father with the servant of servants yeshua will take the souls who are naked and clothe them or dress them right to be his bride his wife specifically two wives church in israel the prince the chosen prince prince of peace the chosen one and the ancient elders will finally rest this shabbat okay he will cause a deep sleep or darkness and move over the face of the waters which is basically humanity okay when you say waters like many nations are considered waters in the torah there is a verse that actually explains that i've forgotten it now from the top of my head i can't think of it but i i can research it and tell you okay it means waters also represents humanity okay so he will cause a deep sleep or darkness and move over the face of the waters humanity god will divide the waters this humanity which were from under the firmament firmament from the waters the humanity which is going to be above the firmament so there's going to be a division okay so he divides the waters all right this is all there in jeremiah 5 this is hidden all along okay why ma means why for you remain naked from the tree okay so this is amazing all right uh let's see let me try and get this um, thing out hang on oh boy let me just go <laughs> what have i done why am i so tech challenged guys oh my gosh i i made a comment here but it's kind of covering the words okay see isaiah 519 yes yes that is that is true because that is what one second let me just uh how do i get this out okay let's just try it this way okay let me see if i can just um oh uh, oh uh, this is so annoying oh my gosh well, how do i get this out okay why uh so what is humanity i was talking about the division again i'm gone i don't know what's going on today this is crazy okay but uh okay all right so i'll say to see if he would call okay this is the one with the thing i am going to remove the comment delete comment okay remember isaiah 519 okay so to see if he would call because you know when people are left behind they're going to ask all right the first question will be why what how all right like ma why for you remain naked from the sin of the tree okay this was in genesis 311 all right uh which is the over here hang on move this up okay so ata was the word right where am i okay so verse 19 was ata okay uh strong 859 again ata you it means you a masculine version of you in hebrew okay which is basically the first occurrence is genesis 311 for you remained naked from the tree okay so in the message when you read this it's just mind blowing guys so what does it say here right for you remain naked from the sin of the tree okay to see if he would call like 
you know isaiah 519 i wish i hadn't taken off that comment now great no i'm just going to go to google and google it okay so let's just see and it it's best put you know ha huh, here it is nlt because i just googled it so yes so this is what this is what it says okay they even mock god and say hurry up and do something do anything you know we want to see what you can do let the holy one of israel carry out his plan who we want to do what it is it's sarcasm and it's best guys okay these are people who don't love god who don't even care about him who mock him they mock his people they mock him okay and they say hurry up and do something do anything let's see if you can do something we want to see what you can do this is isaiah 519 guys so god is telling them now that oh yes yeah now you ask me why for you remain naked from the sin of the tree you never repented okay you never repented and to see if god would call to see oh let's see what the god of israel would do let's see okay so there's mockery going on and this is in part of the message okay and god tells them and unto dust shall thou return for god saw the light that it was good and god divided the light from the darkness he divides the believers the church and israel he divides them okay from the darkness from the sea of humanity that doesn't care for him that doesn't love him that would rather wor- worship the creation rather than the creator people who are so enmeshed in this world that they don't they have no love for god i mean they have more love for the stuff that's around them maybe it could be you know it could be anything you know like they say right like idol worship what what does it mean it could be worshiping something else like you worship you know other thing you worship money you worship whatever properties you worship other things okay i'm not saying th- these are not money and property is not a bad thing it's just that the love of money is and takes you away from god because jesus says you can't worship two masters you can't have two masters you can only you can only have one master so either choose me or choose mammon so it's the love of money that's a problem not the money per se so guys do you see this this is an incredible message the jeremiah the prophet the weeping prophet prophet left in the book of lamentations in chapter 5 because it's completely it's a coded message so you know if you see it right from the top okay we go to verse 1 and i really seriously i'm going to try and leave this excel sheet for you in google drive so you guys can go through it and you know we're studying we're in this together right we're studying together so let's just you know so the message reads like this it's talking about the rapture basically okay to remember the inheritance of the orphans who are the orphans we are the orphans because we are pretty much fatherless motherless in this world right to remember the inheritance of the orphans dividing the waters from above looking down upon egypt or this world the father abba with the servant of servants now here i have added yeshua because of verse jeremiah didn't write to show yeshua but he wrote the servants of servants the, that's in the code and who is the servant of servants it's yeshua right will take the souls who are naked and clothe them dress them to be his bride his wife specifically two wives which is amazing the detail my god no shame two wives church in israel the prince of peace we all know who that is the prince of peace the chosen one and the ancient elders so all those who are like you know the the elders who are coming out of the graves it's talking about the resurrection also okay and the ancient elders will finally rest shabbat rest okay finally rest and he who god father our father abba will cause a deep sleep or darkness and move once again move over the face of waters this time the waters is the humanity okay god will divide the waters or humanity as i mentioned uh, which were from under the firmament from the waters above the firmament why for you remain naked from the sin of the tree when they say why why god why did you do it why did you leave us behind because you did not repent for you remain naked from the sin of the tree and you mocked to see if he would call like oh let's see what the god of israel can do let's you know as isaiah says in verse you know 19 of chapter 5 to see if you call and god then admonishes those and he says and unto dust 
shalt thou return. And then it ends with, for God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. So this is the message hidden. In the book of Lamentations, written by Jeremiah, chapter 5, in the book of Lamentations. Now you tell me that you're not mind blown by this. Okay, and I'm going to leave this entire Excel sheet I made in Google Drive. Go through it yourself. Those of you who love to study like I do, please go through it. Go through the interlinear Bible. See, check against everything that I put that have I made any mistakes. Like have I put the wrong Strong's word? I don't think I have, but hey, you know, two brains are better than one. And in this case, maybe hundreds of you will go through this and enjoy it and love it. And, you know, and you'll see the message that was coded in Jeremiah for I don't know how many thousands of years because this was written around the time of the first temple's destruction, which was around 586 BC. And he was crying over the temple, you know, of them being exiled into Babylon. And Jeremiah was called the weeping prophet because he's really crying. I mean, when you read the book of Lamentations, which we all should at this time of the year, you know, when uh, Tisha B'Av is just around the corner, we should read the book of Lamentations and see what, you know, the pain of exile, of being torn away from, you know, the temple, the Holy of Holies, the presence of the Father, which is the most painful thing in the world, right? To be away from your father. So... Yes, so that's it. And another thing, I'm so sorry. I, did, I haven't made videos in ages. I have been studying, of course. But do you ever get this feeling like that you're so sick of everything in this world that you just want to take a break from the world and immerse yourself in something else? So I did just that. I basically immersed myself in art. Okay. Now, I, I used to draw and sketch and, you know, make a few things here and there. But I got into art in a big way for the last two months. All right. And this is what I'm digressing now, but this is basically my sunroom, okay? And I'm just showing you my artwork. <laughs> Shameless plug, okay? This is um, my button roses outside with my with my happy little old ancient watering can. This is called the Gathering Storm. This is one of my favorite. This is the view from just outside my house here, okay? And the storm clouds. Then I created this, the snow and the devtas, which was, um, again, I had a photograph and, you know, I sort of created this artwork, snow and the devtas from, but this is actually, there's a video called the snow dogs and you can see this, the exact same day that I took that video was the day I took this photograph and then, of course, I created artwork from it. This is a watercolor, petunias on the ledge. This is Masuri Nights. This is the view from my window um, at night. Okay. Amazing. This is, you know, Masuri days. You can see the snow on the ground and all. I've been enjoying this. This is my boy Danny. And I've called it the dog days of summer. <laughs> because, yeah, uh, it was summer and he was staring out the window. So here, here he is. I've labeled this Danny boy because I keep singing this old timer, you know, Jim Reeves song. Oh, Danny boy, the pipes, the pipes are calling from glen to glen and down the mountainside. And he keeps staring at me with this peculiar look on his face. So I had to do this. <laughs> and this is, you know, um, like my sunroom, but the other side. So I have two large bookshelves. One is on this side and one is on this side. So... This is basically the afternoon sun coming into my sunroom. This is the study. This this that you see behind me. Okay. So you can see all these books and everything behind me over here. Right. So this is the study over, over here. And this is during the day when the sun comes in through the windows. So here it is. So these are my artworks. And what I did was um, I created a, a website called pearlshimalianstore.com I'll leave the link below so you can take a look at my artwork you can take a look at all the stuff that I've done and I put up two months of really hard work okay two months of uh, I even got some Himalayan art collectibles like you know I love these old botanical you know vintage prints so I have those then I have these um, different artworks 
and I have one frame posters and I know this may sound like a shameless plug but it's not because most of you are not from India and this is only for sale in India <laughs> so it's not a shameless plug I'm just sharing with you what I've been doing the last two months I even managed to get into Etsy it's very difficult for Indian sellers to get on Etsy and as you can tell this is only you know I got onto Etsy and I also called it Pearl's Himalayan store and Basically, I've been into art the last two months, which is why I haven't had time to make videos and I've been studying, but I just haven't had time to share a lot. So this is the art so far. I'm still going on creating and yeah, so I'll leave the links below. I don't think you can, you can actually purchase any of this because this is in Indian rupees. So I don't know how it works. Okay. This has just been like, you just started in July, like middle of July or something. And I think, yeah, so we've got, we've got the artwork here and I'll leave links to the store here, but go and check it out. Uh, I know for a fact that the Himalayan store, the, the Indian store, you can't actually buy if you're outside of India, because these are all actual physical frames and actual physical artwork. Okay. And poster rolls. Whereas the one on Etsy, I think you can pick it up if you want to, because that's, that's digital downloads that's like instant digital downloads so you basically download it take it to a printer have it printed and framed because i don't see any other way to share my artwork my you know my passion for the last two or more months that i've created all these art prints you know so i didn't i didn't see any other way to share it so i think that's great so i'm going to share that shameless plug i know oh but never mind I, I've, I've enjoyed every minute of putting this 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 artwork together and it's very detailed artwork it's very detailed as you can tell like it's it's a lot of I've enjoyed it but you can make out that it's been a labor of love art from the heart because I got so sick of everything in this world I just wanted time out I was like no lord I'm taking your time out that's it I'm taking a time out. I'm going to immerse myself in beauty and art. And I ended up creating a website, putting it on Etsy. Etsy thing just happened like maybe a week ago. But anyway, so anyhow, <laughs> to um, close with this shameless plug of telling you guys about my artwork, I'm just sharing, you know, this passion I have for creating art. But yeah i just wanted to tell you that now that tisha Biyab is around the corner 26 27th of july it was the right time to share this this study on lamentations because that was also written around tisha tisha Biyab, right so and i'm going to try and um, put this lamentations by code that has been found which is awesome i think because how many thousands of years has it stayed hidden huh so anyway this has been found now and I'm going to try and put this, uh, you know, great hidden message, this entire Excel sheet so you can go through it. I'm, I'm going to put it up on my Google Drive and share that uh, drive link over here in the description box. All right. And uh, yeah, that's it for now. Till I come up with another study. I'm really looking forward to, you know, everything that's, there's so much, I believe the red heifer is, uh, you know, ready and so much is happening in the world but because of all this happening in the world all this kitsch pitch happening in the world i was like i need to take a break so now i i'm involved in art and i'm involved in creating fine art prints and things like that of course it's wonderfully creative and i'm really enjoying that too but then you know my first love is the word <laughs> so i'll never stop studying but yeah i didn't share for a while because i was so busy setting up the website and trying to get, you know, getting the artworks into the fine print format so that I can share them with others. So anyhow, that's, and I designed a mug saying, you know, I wanted to remind myself about prayer. So I think I designed a mug uh, saying that, yes, um, God can move mountains and prayer can move God. And a sweatshirt. I have that. I have a sweatshirt. But anyway, things like that. I've been doing nice creative things. So I'll say bye now. And God bless you guys. I hope I can come back with a study video again soon. Hope you enjoyed this one though.
I thought it was great. Did you? Okay, bye.